Ready for tip off and VCU controls the tip. Mark McClinney, one of your referees today, joined by a couple others, and Michael gets it in. Three ball, no good. Rebound. No good. Michael gets the offensive rebound. No good, too hard. And another offensive rebound by Lewis Utsi. Uh, that's a really nice job. I know that's a, the, the very thing that Tori Verdi told us he did not want to happen is allow VCU to offensive rebound. This is three different times they're getting second, third chances. And of course, they drew the foul here because of that. Really good hustle on the glass from the Rams. And Julianne, Coach Verdi for UMass. He told us one of the keys was no second chance points and to rebound the ball. And we see him on the screen right there. 200th game today marks the 200th game played as UMass head coach. Or excuse me, Filazzi, Destiny Filazzi. Biasu, no good. Breen comes down with the rebound. Mayo up the court. Three ball by Sidney Taylor is good. Asari drove to the rim. The two was good for her. and. You're right, Julianne, their last six games. As Sam Breen does the nice inside to the middle hook over her left shoulder. But of their six games, an A-10 play or six losses, should I say, five of six have all been decided by less than single digits. Uh, it's incredibly close. So they're you, right there. You know they're right there, and they're hungry to get some wins, and they want to be playing their best basketball February, March, and that's a nice job. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Mayo to Filoxi. Looking at Sam Breen. Nothing. Taylor uses the screen, and there's a hard hedge. Almost a turnover. Look at that. High low is good from Sam Breen to Galakulandi. And you see the, the double team, that, that really hard hedge. We got to get better. Yeah. Because something's got to change because we didn't win. We got, we got to the final, but we didn't win. And, and that's what I like about him as a coach. He's so competitive. Yeah. Told his team he wasn't satisfied. They've got to do more, and more is exactly what they got from Sam Breen as she goes with the running jump hook. Just like Sam Breen, but Sam Breen, 51 double-doubles in her career. One triple-double set this season, and she is a walking bucket. She really is, and she's going to play pro. I mean, she's got that kind of body and the skills in her repertoire. And I mean, listen, she was... In high school, she scored over 2,500 points. That's that's Nuts. really hard to do. <laughs> that's a score. <laughs> they leave her go one-on-one -on -one on Parham. And again, they might have to get Parham some help because Sam Breen is abusing her in the paint. And VCU will just run that clock out. Well, that was a nice first quarter. UMass, a nice double-digit lead, 22 to 8. Stay on the other side of the break, folks, and rejoin us. Second quarter coming up next. Sydney Taylor had a career high 32 points last season and a career high of 12 field goals made versus the Rams back on January 12th of 2022. She had six three point field goals made. So Taylor really knows how to make a impression against the Rams when she plays yeah, that. Uh, yeah. and, and trust me, you and I both played. We, we remember, right, the games <laughs> that you played really well oh, against. Yeah. You just don't forget that. It gives you confidence. Griffith Wallace, jumper, that's no good, rims in and out. Breen comes up with another rebound. Filoxi pushes it up the floor. Filoxi to Taylor. McKenna White gets it to Puleza. Nice pass on the inside, and they threaded the needle. Nice pass to find Mayo. Well, that's a skip pass to Breen. She'll shoot the three, and that'll be good. Sam Breen is on fire, and we're still in the first half. Uh, she's just showing why she's the player of the year right there. I mean, we saw her make some layups. We saw her make some 10-footers, some fades, and then she steps out and makes a three. I mean, three-dimensional right there. Can score at three different levels, standing at six foot one. She's got 15 points on the night. Tibiasu. Sizes up the defense. Takes it on the interior. Jump fake. And she gets that one to go. She had to get creative. Putting up the, 
Goggles. <laughs> I see Pilox, you. He thought that the goggles were nice. Three ball no good, but the rebound is good for Samantha Robinson, who grabbed that offensive rebound. Two points much needed for the Rams. So it wasn't a live ball turnover, but they still, it results in no points. They've got eight so far in this game. Yeah, they're struggling so much to get any anything offensively. And they're switching into a zone here to try to change it up. It's tough to play UMass in the zone, too, because they are a good three-point shooting team. Oh, wow. Breen finds Mayo, who finds Stalakulani. No good on the layup, but the extra possession is good, and they thread the needle. And that's my biggest problem with the zone. You can't find bodies. You're, you're, you're just kind of walking in to try to rebound. No good for the three from Biasu. Robinson rebound. Grace Hudson's going to put it up. And that one's good. Three points much needed for the Rams. But you feel those abs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And talk about taking the wind out of your sails. Tibiasu knocks a really beautiful yeah. three down to end the half, and then UMass puts the dagger in. Absolutely, wind out of the sails. Well, UMass has a nice lead here, 16-point lead at halftime, 39 to 23. Julianne and I will join you on the other side of halftime. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a couple features coming up for you. Too short. I like that one. <laughs> hey, Brian. I'm surprised right. mine never said that. I, I like that one. <laughs> Griffith Wall is looking to take it the full and dishes it off to Lewis Utsi, and that three is good. That's how VCU wants to start the quarter. Yeah, that's great. And, and you know, Beth O'Boyle is probably telling them that they did have open threes in the first half, and we saw Hudson knock a couple of nice ones down. Dalakulandi. No, excuse me. Sorry. Hudson. Gets it to Walters, a little far off the block. Tries to get that into Parham, but Breen was there in transition. Gets it to Taylor, and that too is good. And that's the second time Breen's done that. She's just poaching defensively. We talk a lot about her offense, but that just created a nice transition bucket for her teammate. Turnaround jumper, no good. The rebound is good, and right there, Galakulandi's offensive rebound, no good. Griffith Wallace comes down and transition the other way. Gets a Tibiasu for the three, and that is good from the corner. They get the ball inside to Breen, who checks back in. Another hook, and that one is good. I'm surprised the Rams haven't gotten some help. Nothing there. Gets it inside. And Walters, at the end of the shot clock, gets it up. But nothing touches the rim, and that is the end of the third. Into Breen, turn around, crossover, and she steps back, almost shoots it, but threads the needle and finds McKenna White. So unselfish. Quick pass from Hudson to Lewis, back to Hudson. She'll take the deep three, and that one's good. Now we've seen a lot of those go down. That's her third here today. Hudson really has the hot hand. So you gotta just continue to get her the rock. Mayo crossover, uses the screen, another crossover, runner, and that one's good. Mayo had to put in all the work for those two possessions. Yeah, a really great job, Mayo, just maintaining the basketball, keeping the dribble alive. <laughs> free throw is good for Lewis Utsi. Lucy making a little bit of an ending in the scoring right now. She's got 11 points for the game. That's good. I mean, it's a good sign. You, you get your minutes, you get a chance to shine, and you want to take advantage of it. Yeah, Lucy has started the last nine games for the Rams, so coming on strong, second half of the season. Taylor will take that one in. Jumper, no good. And that'll be a foul on the Rams. And we've got Lily Ferguson in the game, who coach describes her. She's best when she's attacking the ball. The three ball will go up, and that one is good. UMass is not finished yet. Kristen Williams knocks down that three. It doesn't matter who's in the game for UMass. They've just got so many weapons, even when they pull players off the, the end of the bench. It's really good to see. She really came on strong late last season for VCU. She scored in double figures in six of those final 12 games and posted a couple of double doubles. So last season, she was really tough. She's she's had some injuries this yeah. season. Has not been 
without minutes restriction. So yeah. hasn't haven't really seen her come on as strong either. And you mentioned it, the minutes restriction. She missed nine games with a concussion protocol. Was the second leading scorer for VCU prior to that injury. So yeah. she's still working her way back. Yeah, that's been tough when she's their post presence and she gets her timing right, her conditioning back. She'll be another weapon they can turn to. They'll run the clock out. Impressive win for the minute women. UMass will dribble this one out. And we're going to talk to Sam Breen after this one. But they'll finish this one 83 to 57, an impressive win. And they'll move to 6 and 1 in the A10, 16 and 4 overall. And let's take a look at these updated standings. Rhode Island still undefeated at the top. UMass sitting second at 6 and 1. Fordham third, LaSalle fourth, Davidson, St. Joseph's, NGW following. So that's the top seven teams in the A10.